Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about the Privazer app, which is a free tool you could use to do things such as uh, clean up your computer, remove temp files, you could even use it to securely delete files and folders, uh, give yourself a little performance boost, and other things. Alright, so there is a lot to it, even though it's still kind of simple at the same time. So we've been using this for a little while, so it's a pretty nice tool. And it's also one of those tools that has really good reviews, and it's also safe to use. All right, so to run it, all you need to do is download the executable so there's nothing to install. So we have it right here, so let's open it up. So you'll have to say yes to the USC prompt. You'll need to be an admin to run this. So click on yes there. All right, so when you first start it, you have several options here. All right, so you can see here we're running the standard free version, but there is a pro version with some additional features. If you want to check that out, you can change your language, update it, and so on. You can also click here to get the pro version. All right, so there are several options when you first run it. So you could go through the wizard and kind of pick all your settings. And when you do that, it'll save it as a Privazer file. And then the next time you open the app, it'll actually load that file and save all of your configuration settings. Or you could do this and go right to the main menu. So we're going to go through the wizard, which will actually take us to the main menu when we're done here. And we don't have a Privazer file to load at the moment so we can't use this option and one thing to keep in mind is after it makes this file for you um, it's going to need to be able to find that file to load your settings so if you delete it or move it you might have to uh, either recreate it you know restore it or point it to the right location alright so let's go through the wizard real quick here alright so we have some options here what kind of computer user are we let's say we're an advanced user so here's what it's going to start doing all right, so it'll look for invalid shortcuts, such on the Start menu and Desktop, so we'll just say yes to this. You don't have to say yes to all of these options, by the way. All right, so we're not going to empty the recycle bin, but you can, of course. And this will kind of permanently delete it, too, as you can see there. All right, if you want to remove Office software history from your previously opened documents and that type of thing, you could do that. You could see it recommends not to do that because most people like to keep their history. All right, so if you want to remove all of your image or photo history, you could do that as well. We'll say yes to this one, just for some privacy. And if you want to clear the list of recently opened files and folders in Windows Explorer, you could do that too. We'll say yes. And then if you want to clear out your thumbnails cache, you could do that as well. But we're going to say no to this since we're working with some pictures on a regular basis. Right, and then for your web browser, you know the autocomplete where you start typing and it fills in some choices for you. You're most likely going to want to say no to that unless you want to clear out all that information. Same for thumbnails for websites. This is assuming you use you know, a home page that has thumbnails. So the last session for browsers, I'm going to say no to this because I want to save it. And one thing you should do too, let me close these web browsers, is have your browser closed if you're going to be clearing out temporary files. All right, you want to clear out your history. I'm going to say no, but of course, once again, this is up to you. Smart selection of cookies. So this way you could pick all the cookies rather than just remove all cookies or don't delete any cookies. So we'll say yes so we can show you how this works. All right, then the web cache, which stores your activity on the Internet without your knowledge in the background. We'll say yes to this for privacy purposes. All right, then there's the shell bags, which store the dates when you open a particular folder on your PC without your knowledge in the background. So you can remove all if you have the pro version, or if you have the free version, you can remove traces of deleted folders. So we'll say yes to this. All right, then the registry cleanup here. Usually not a good idea to play with the registry and do registry cleanup. Even though you do have the option to save the changes, so I'm going to say no to this. All right, then we have the System Resource Use Manager, which shows the programs you use the most and when you use it. So if you're concerned about privacy, you can say yes. Otherwise, you can say no. We'll go ahead and say yes to this. And then if you're playing any games, you could have it clear the history. So we're not playing games on here, so we're not even going to worry about this one. All right, so now if you have like an upgraded uh, Windows installation, sometimes you'll have that windows.old and a bunch of extra files. So we'll say yes to clean this up because this is where you're going to get most of your space back. And then same here for Windows updates. 
right then we have the option to clean the Windows prefetch so invalid prefetch or unused prefetch in the last six months so you can think of the prefetch as kind of like a cache of your most uh, frequently used uh, program files kept in memory so for the most part it should be okay to choose one of these two options but like it says here when you start the application the first time it might load up a little slower all right so if you are running out of space you might want to consider disabling hibernation because the hibernation file can be quite large so I'm going to say no because this computer doesn't have hibernation so this is up to you so of course if you delete the hibernation file and turn it off your computer is not going to hibernate so keep that in mind all right so we're on 20 out of 20 here all right so now it's going to save it in a new file unless you want to save it in an existing file so I don't have a privacy.ini file so I'm going to say OK and create a new file and you can see it put that file in the same location as the executable that's why I'm saying if you move this file or delete it the next time you run the program you're not going to have all these settings saved so what it does when you open the program it reads this file so you don't have to go through this whole wizard and reconfigure everything so now you can either choose to perform the first scan or go to the main menu let's just go to the main menu so we can check out the options there all right, so let's just go through these options one at a time here. So if you want to scan, you could pick the whole computer, secondary drives, external storage, if you have it, USB. So if I click on USB, for example, it's not finding one because I don't have a USB attached. But I do have a secondary drive here, which is the E drive. And you see it pops up this message to choose the cookies to delete. You could click on C. So I'm going to try not to jump around too much because that's one thing that's a little iffy with this program. It kind of jumps around all over the place. So you have the smart, manual, or remove all. But this E drive does not have any cookies, so we're not going to worry about it. And this E drive doesn't have much on it, so deleting this stuff is not going to really help us here. All right, so let's just pick computer in this case. All right, so we have the local disk. So we have the pre-analysis, all these things here. Now it's telling us we could select multiple drives, which we kind of saw with that E drive. So this is just a pop up. You can't click on anything here. And then you could uncheck any of these things you don't want to clear out. And then you could select all. And then you could start cleaning or shut down after cleaning. One thing you might want to do is choose this option here to create a restore point. So that way, if something gets deleted or something goes wrong, you could. Uh, hopefully restore that restore point and get things working again now I have this option here not to clean the registry that was chosen from the previous setting and therefore we don't need to save the registry because we're not cleaning it all right you can see here the cookies to keep 18 if we click on modify so let's say we want to maybe keep Amazon and PayPal so that way we don't have to re-log in with our name and password if we have it saved into the web browser so I'm going to leave the smart selection here, but of course you could go through and choose the ones you want or remove from the list. And then you can see too, when you hover over each one, you have some additional options. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about when I say there's a lot to this program. Some of them will just tell you what it's going to do. Like you can see the cookies there. If you want to check some of these options here, besides the defaults. Some of the Windows options. You can see we have registry unchecked because that's how I configured it in the wizard. So there's the option to delete the hibernation file that we saw. Clear out the jump list. App information. And this, for example, just because you see these here doesn't mean it's installed on your computer. It's just optional if you did have these apps. Same with this here and this here. All right, let's click on scan and see what happens. You can see it's going through each section here. So if this takes too long, I'll probably just pause the video and then be back when it's done. You can see we got this message here. You could use your browser during the scan, but it's better to close it during the cleanup. That's why we closed it there. All right, so what I actually did was just fast forward it because I wanted you to see all the steps there. So rather than making you watch it, 
uh, just going to speed it up so it's going to go really fast. Just keep in mind it's going to take a little longer than what you're seeing on the screen here. All right, so now that the scan is complete, we could click on the Clean button here. All right, so we have some options here. Normal cleanup, more free space and performance, privacy max, quick cleanup, less privacy, and turbo cleanup. So which one you choose is going to be up to you, uh, depending on your needs here. So for the sake of time, I'm going to do the quick cleanup. Otherwise, I'd probably normally do the normal cleanup just to get the best bang for the buck here. Let's click on this. So I'll probably fast forward this as well, or pause it, depending how long it takes. All right, so it says the first cleanup may take one to two hours. That's usually not going to be the case, though. And you can see here we have a little indicator of free space. It's gradually going up. All right, so now it's running disk cleanup, which is the old Windows tool. So once again, if this takes some time, I'll we'll pause it. All right, moving on to the next step here. All right, so the cleanup is complete here. So we got 11 gigs free here. We'll click on close. All right, so that is the scan in depth cleanup tool here. Just run on the computer itself. All right, let's go over to scan specific traces. So if you want to search for residual traces of old files, software use, registry, USB history, let's say this for example. Do it on the C drive. So by the way, MFT stands for Master File Table in Windows, in case you're wondering. All right, so we've got some space back there as well. All right, so you can see the scan is complete, so we could actually do the cleaning if we want. And we have the same option here. So I'm not going to go through this one because, you know, it's going to make this video too long if I go through the process for every one. So I'm going to go back here. All right, now we have the Delete Without a Trace option here. So let's say we want to delete this data folder here. You could also do it for the recycle bin. So this will delete it and wipe it as well so it can't be recovered. How true that is, I guess, will depend on the method used to try and recover it. But for most normal people, it's going to be gone for good. All right, so let's go to the data folder here. All right, so here it tells you what it's going to do. Let's click on Start. All right, so it's been deleted. Two files and one folder. See the data folder and the files that were in it. All right, and then we have some options for the program here. So this will run you through the wizard again. Advanced options. All right, so we have a lot of advanced options here. Desktop shortcuts for updates, registry backups, cleanup options, memory. You want to delete your page file, which you don't want to do. Internet options, user profiles, if you have any of those configured, cache, uh, cookies. So this is using the smart setting where you could choose which cookies to delete. Then you have some include options. So additional files or folders that you securely want to remove, you could add some here and some ones that you want to exclude. All right, then we have the schedule here. All right, so to use the schedule, you're going to have to use the installable version. I forgot to mention that there is an installable version. I usually just like to use the executable because I could just move it around and I don't have to worry about installing anything. So I'll say OK to that, but if you want to schedule some scans to be done automatically, you can do that as well. Then we have automatic cleanup. So this is for the pro version, as you can see. So you could have your browser uh, information cleared when you close it, have it notify you. You have a clean and shut down PC option have it run at startup and so on. Then we have restore and repair. So if you made a restore point, you could restore them from here and restore your registry backups if you made any. And then you have the option here for system storage and file repair. So you could kind of think of this as, you know, something you would do like an SFC scan now or a 
dsim command to kind of go through and see if you could find and fix anything but we're not going to run this so you don't have to watch this but it is an option and then you have the contact us version and you can see here we have a task in process option so if you were running something you could come back here and check it out and you can see we have a little log history here as well all right so as you can see there is quite a bit to this tool so like I mentioned before, when you run it the first time, it's going to make this file here. And you can see it's going to use it again next time we run it. Unless you click this option and make a new file. So this comes in handy, like I said, so you don't have to go through that whole wizard and recreate all your settings every time you use it. All right then, if we click on Get the Pro version. You can see it's $50. For a single individual license and you could change it to company and that should change the price most likely one pc to four pcs you can renew your license or get a new license and even contribute if you want all right so i will put a link in the description where you can download privacy and then you could try it out for yourself but I would recommend, like I said, making a system restore point before using it, just in case you clicked on some option you probably shouldn't have, or when it does the Windows file cleanup, something gets deleted or something goes wrong, you never know what could happen with these kind of things. So it's always a good idea to be safe. All right, thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe.